Hello, welcome back to my outdoor bench build. In this video, I will be making three insert plates to fit in the hole in the middle of my bench. These inserts are made from vintage MDF that I've had in my workshop for a number of years. They are left over from a wardrobe build I made 25 years ago when I bought this house and bought from a shop fitting company I worked for at the time. My first operation was to cut three blanks that fitted the hole within the bench. If I remember correctly, the manufacturer of this MDF was Caber, a Scottish company, and they were the main supplier of the shop fitting company I worked for. This MDF is superior to the MDF I've made the bench top from. The MDF I bought to make the bench top from came from my local builder's merchant and is within walking distance of my home. I know from experience of working for a timber distributor years ago that MDF from such builder's merchant is usually lower quality non-branded material for that's the price you pay for convenience. And I also remember when we used to sell 18mm MDF for less than £8 per sheet. OK, back to the build. So once I cut the MDF into three panels, the same size as the opening, I just had to form a rebate around the inside because at 18 millimeters, it was just a couple of millimeters too thick to sit flush with the top of the bench. This is the exact reason why I decided to use the Craig plates. The hole can be infilled with material of different thicknesses and levelled by winding up or down the grub screws. And once I'd routed the three plates, I removed the router and the plate from the router as I would need this later. Even though I'd formed the rebates around the plates, it was still stuck up slightly as it was catching on the corners. So I just needed to remove the corners with my saw and pared it away with my chisel so it could sit perfectly flat. I can now drop the MDF blank in followed by the Craig plate and then using a cell centering drill bit drill out the four corner holes. My new apprentice Striper is observing the procedures. Then remove the Craig plate and finish off the holes with a 6mm bit. This blank panel can now be dropped back into the hole. Using his Jedi mind power, Stripe it levels up the plate. Good Stripe it. The four corners are then countersunk, so the 6mm mounting bolts are fitted and securely fix the panel in place. The other two panels are constructed in exactly the same way. The first plate I'm going to make continues the MFT holes within the bench top. And because the plate is held in place by the bolts, in theory at least, it should remain in the same position. When I made this bench top a few weeks ago, I didn't fully open up all the 3mm holes into the 20mm holes and this is one of the reasons why so I could use my UK path guide system to locate the ruler to complete the holes in these inserts. Once all the 3mm holes have been completed I could then swap to the large jig and drill out all the 20mm dog holes. For general day-to-day -day use of this bench, I see this insert as the standard. And once all the holes were complete, it was just a case of running my router around the holes with a chamfer bit just to clean up the entrance. And that is the first plate complete. So far, I've only used my Triton TRA001 router suspended in the Craig plate. It is my intentions longer term to use my smaller Triton router, the JOF001. But to do this, I need to make a specific plate to suspend it. This router does not fit the Craig plate. First, I mark the centre of the MDF plate. 
Then I remove the base plate of the router and use this to set out all the fixing points I would need to mount the router. This router comes with two bolts to mount accessories to the base plate, so I am going to use these bolts here. To countersink the heads of the bolts within the MDF plate, I'm using a 15mm Forstner bit, which is the smallest one I have. Ideally, I could have done with a 12mm instead. And once I drill the 15mm hole, I then opened up the hole through the MDF with a 6mm drill bit. I needed to square out the first few millimetres of the hole because the bolt's shank is square. And just before moving on to the next stage, I needed to ensure that the bolt heads were firmly below the face of the insert. Another 15mm hole was drilled straight through the insert to make room for the winding handle. And finally, a 30mm hole was drilled through for the router cutter. The winding handle hole and the router bit hole was just cleaned up with a chamfer cutter in my Makita router. I can now mount the plate on the base of the router. As I said previously, these two bolts are part of the mounting kit that comes with this router. The router mounted into its new plate is dropped into the hole and leveled on the Craig levelers and then just firmly fixed in place with the supplied bolts. The height of the router can now be adjusted with the spindle that is supplied with the router. This is the spindle that came with the larger router. The one for the JOF is slightly shorter and a little bit less unwieldy. The final plate is for my smaller Makita router. This aluminium plate here I bought a while ago off Amazon and it's been kicking around the workshop for a while so it was nice to finally use it. So I found four pieces of scrap inch timber and puts a couple of pocket hole screws in one end of each of them. This makes a cheap and cheerful routering jig so I can router the recess in the face of the insert panel. I inserted a couple of screws into the face of the insert panel. Of course if this had been a finished piece of joinery I couldn't do that but seeing it was just for an insert panel it didn't really matter. So, if Vic and Bob are happy, I'm happy. My trend router already had a bearing bit installed. So for this cut, I used that. I've not used this router for a while, so it was nice to give it a run out. And once the routering had taken place, I drilled an hole with my Forstner bit I used earlier, and then Using a borrowed jigsaw, I don't have one at the moment, I opened up the hole. Before I removed the routering jig, I just tried the plating to ensure it was going to fit. And then removed the jig. There was just a small amount of chiselling I needed to do to clean up the hole so the base plate fitted flush. And then it was a case of unattaching the base plate of the router and transferring the fixings into the new plate. There was a slight clash between the rounded body of the router and the MDF plate, so using the jigsaw I just slightly curved out the opening for the router to sit in properly. And now I can attach the aluminium plate and the MDF plate with the four provided screws. And once all this was done, 
the router was ready to use. As a test cut, I just put a couple of chamfers on an off cut of plywood. And this is how I made three additional inserts for my new outdoor bench. I hope you found this video of interest. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more of this bench build, there's a couple of videos here.